Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I've got the Graf Zeppelin for you. And yes, I am one of the people who managed to buy it for the limited time it was available in the store. And basically, I saw the alert come out. I had no hesitation just because I wanted this ship regardless of her performance, and I was a little surprised to see her out based on some of the feedback I'd seen and heard. I thought she'd be in testing a lot longer before she got released. Saw her in the shop, bought her, and shortly after she got removed. Either way, I will be keeping her because it's the Graf Zeppelin to me. It's something somewhat iconic and I am a bit of a ship collector so eventually I would like to have every ship in the game if I can ever afford it slash actually just grind my way through. So what makes her special? Well, as far as the loadout there is no torpedo bomber option. She's got these uh, Junkers JU-87s that can use either high explosive or armor piercing shells. But when you look at the bomb dispersion on those armored piercing shells, and from what I've played and what I've seen, you need pretty much someone to be AFK to manage to hit their ship with any reliability. So I've been mostly playing with the HE bombers. You've got three of them. If you cycle them right, you can get a lot of long burning fires. Now, as far as upgrades and consumables, well, nothing too special there. Anti-aircraft, she's got some mean secondaries on her, which is, I'd say, something special, as most of the higher tier uh, aircraft carriers start to lose these kind of hull-mounted main guns, so to say. But this isn't really a full review. This was just me going to show her off for the people who haven't seen her and the viewers out there who are kind of curious on my opinion. And you'll notice, yes, I do have co-op battle selected. And the reason I'm doing that, I cannot reliably play her. If I come up against pretty much anything other than another Graf Zeppelin, I just get kicked out of the air. And to not put a team at a disadvantage just to make a video, I'm going to do it this way. Here we are loading into a co-op battle, and the one thing you at least got to give this ship, regardless of her performance, is that she is a looker. Also, a very large ship. Kind of like... Oh, what am I trying to think of? I can't think of it right now, but she is not small and you really notice that when things spot you and start shooting at you. They have a pretty easy time finding their way to hit you. Now as for the loadout, the two fighter, three bomber loadout, the two fighters definitely put you at a bit of a disadvantage but I've found with them fully upgraded you can kinda hold your own but once again you are eventually going to get overwhelmed and that's that's really the hard part is you're more a delaying action. You're not something that is going to permanently be fighting against an equal tier Japanese or American carrier. Eventually you'll be taken out of the game. Now what does in my opinion make her somewhat strong is the laser like accuracy of these dive bombers and you can see it there like if you lead a ship properly you're pretty much guaranteed hits, and I've had some pretty decent luck hitting destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. They don't need to be big targets, and I'm by no means a competent aircraft player. But, let's see how they do in real life. And you can see I'm kind of just going to send them one after the other straight for this, well, was going to be the dragon. But now that the Tirpitz is spotted, it only makes sense that I go for her. So sidestep the cruiser and get myself going towards this battleship. They're kind of the juiciest targets. And I gotta say, when you get a battleship alone like this, it is one of the times that not having torpedo bombers of any kind really does hurt you. The 
plus side to playing co-op is it does guarantee that the enemy carrier is also of the same nation as you. So two drops, two fires, 21,000 damage. Pretty decent hit there. And I'm just going to wait for that Turpids to put the fire out and then send in my next squadron. And this is pretty much how I've been operating the Zeppelin and it's worked out nicely for me. And even without manually dropping, you get a bomb hit and there's my next fire. That's what I was looking for and that's all I'm really going to need. The Turpids is going to burn for a while, I'm going to get some good damage and my planes can go back and rearm. Meanwhile, I fought off the enemy fighters, and now my planes are kind of free to just wander. And I guess one of the main reasons I don't play carriers a lot or common to take carrier games is when it is a match just like this without too much going on, particularly something like a co-op battle where it's not exactly uh, engaging or exciting play, it can be a little slow. So we'll jump kind of to my thoughts on the Graf Zeppelin, her release, you know, what they maybe could have done better. And one of the main things I'd comment on right away is you have a bunch of community contributors who are kind of the community or the voice of wargaming to the community. You know, they're the people that wargaming gives these ships to early, to try out, to put together reviews on, and share that to try to build the hype to get people buying into these. And you had a lot of community contributors all going, this is a bad idea, it's not balanced, it's not complete, more needs to get done. And then all of a sudden they released it. I think there was some drama, but I'm not going to go onto that between certain contributors and Wargaming. Whatever happened between them is between them. But when the people who are kind of supposed to be your outreach to the community are going, you know, this isn't done, someone has to take the reins and be like, okay, let's look at this again, not just push it forward. And we've seen this a couple times from Wargaming where they've just shoehorned um, kind of a product out the door and then had to, after the fact, repair it. And sadly, this is another one, in my opinion. And it doesn't have to be. I really think one easy balancing factor, and I don't know how well it would work, is just upgrade the fighter squadrons bring them up to full-size squadrons and right there you might fix a big part of the issue. Um, the four fighters like the Japanese is fine on a ship where you can get you know three fighter squadrons, two dive bomber squadrons and another two torpedo bomber squadrons or like these massive air groups but on something that's only got dive bombers going for it, albeit very accurate dive bombers, only having two fighter squadrons can put you to disadvantage. Now in something like the Saipan, that kind of gets cancelled out by the fact that they're much higher tier planes. In the Graf Zeppelin, they're tier 8 ra ranked planes, so you no longer have that advantage, so you're playing at a handicap essentially you know what the Americans have going for it sure fewer squadrons more plane in the squadrons the Japanese fewer planes more squadrons and then they come out with this and they seem to forget that balancing factor anyways hopefully in the near future we'll see her back and in better form the one plus side is it seems like anyone who bought her has the option of returning her for a full refund or they kind of get to be part of the guiding crew on things that can be done to make her better or balanced. So hopefully they'll listen, we'll see how she comes out. Either way, I think it's a beautiful ship and I'm happy to have her in the harbor even if she won't get played very often for now. 
Hope people found this informative. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash. I'll have another one for you all later.